Alright guys, it's been about 10 days, your boy's decayed. I'm gonna get into a video for you guys today and just try to explain to you some of my thought processes and how I do things. This is about like Master, Zelo, Grandmaster. And I'm just gonna tell you what I would do in my certain situations. This game is a prime example though of me not pushing 9 and making the most max cab board I can even when I have resources versus me just trying to hit my upgrades. You'll see me struggling throughout this game with me just keep trying to hit the like a like the Azir 2 or whatnot and I just couldn't seem to find them and it, you really do <clears throat> need your 2 star 4 cost. So starting opener we're just going to grab whatever pairs we can get. Renekton upgraded at the start is pretty big. We don't really want to play Shirima because, I don't know, there's just comps that are better than it. It feels like it gets hella outscaled. You need like Exodia augments to even make it work. But there's a few ways you can play Shirima in this game. You can either play... Alright, we'll go over augments here really quick. We're not playing Yordles. And we're just going to refresh until we find something combat oriented or econ oriented. I don't really care about the weird utility augments usually you want like rich gets richer you want so you want something that's going to juice you at the start of the game on your 2-1 augment that's going to make a huge impact and then or you're going to want to choose like you know a really good combat augment that allows you to just snowball in the early game right that's what we're doing here having a renekton two of these tank items tank items are really good in the early game scaling items are really good in the late game I know it seems like common sense, but it's not always. Like, slamming a Rage Blade right now ain't gonna do nothing when your unit's hitting for 20 damage. Versus, like, a Sunfire, it's a gigaton of stats. It provides so much utility. It, like, well rounds out your comp in the early game really well. But basically, like I was saying, there's, like, two or three ways you can really play the Shirima comp. You can either play it one where you just go full Shirima. You go for like the 7 Shrima or like 9 Shrima if you can, where you're just playing all the Shrima units. The next way you can play it is like with Garen, Lux, and like Sona or something like that. That way you can get the Damasian Juggernaut angle going, and you can have like a dual carry between Azir and Lux, and you're going to want to same side the Lux and the Azir. That way the Lux lasers down a unit, and then, you know, Azir is able to like stab it to death. And then she's able to get a reset and transfer over to a new unit. That way you can just eliminate units off the board slowly and win fights out. And even if you lose, then you don't take big HP losses, right? And the third, I believe, is just like full strategist. You know, you kind of play towards that angle. Or you can play, like, with action carry, too, right? Like, you go for, like, action three, like, kind of like a dead eye angle, right? There's, like, a few ways you can... There's, like, a few ways you can tilt this. Since we know we're going to probably be going for Azir, you know, you gotta, you guys gotta... When you're playing the game, you gotta start coming up with a game plan in your head of what you want your final picture to look like. It's like, uh... It's like, in terms of, like, Bob Ross or something like that, right? You don't just pick up a paintbrush and you just don't start slapping the canvas with stuff. You kind of like start thinking in your head, what, am, what, what do I want this to end up like? I'm holding on to the Renekton's here on my bench because, one, we all know Nasus is a much better tank than Renekton is, and we're not going to want a Sunfire and a Spear of Visage on a 1-cost unit versus a 4-cost unit, a 3-gold unit versus a 12-gold unit, right? So we're kind of like orchestrating and dancing with the game right now to get what we want. Scouting I don't feel like is too important right now, especially in these early stages. Nobody has enough units on their board to wrap or anything like that. But getting an early action is phenomenally good. This unit's like giga broken. It always kills like two to three units on the board always. I do want to sell the Teemo and make gold interest here, but the reason why I don't is because the Ionia augment 
Getting Teemo where I get multicast or ant like strategist out onto my board is phenomenally strong. That's why we didn't make gold interest here. Which I mean, we probably should have because we could always get it back, but I don't know. I think it's really good tech in at this point in the game. Slamming the Rage Blade on Action because we know we want to put it on his ear, right? The things you. I think if you want to play Sharima, it is really item dependent and augment dependent comp. It's not as flexible as like Shadow Isles or some of the other comps you can play where you can just run whatever you want, right? Here we're just, it's a gold augment. You guys really do not want to take a econ augment for a gold augment. You always kind of want to take a combat augment. Especially in this set right now, combat augments are so overbearing. So right now, if like somebody took like, what, Rich Gets Richer or something here, they're fucked. Because right now my board's getting giga juiced on top of having tons of stats. And they're just never going to win a combat against me. Especially because we're win streaking here, we're on a four streak. We want to do everything we can do to try to promote that win streak. Just sold the Renekton again to make gold interest. And this is where I start holding on to units and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. The reason why I'm so broke is because I quit making gold interest. So I guess that would be a, um, an angle I could improve upon, right? But I don't know. I think I have the luxury to hold on to certain units, especially because if we just see one Nasus, we're just full selling and pivoting, right? I don't really care about a Nasus having, you know, a Nasus 1 compared to a Renekton 2 having like all the tank items i don't think it's that big of a deal especially with like the shrima bonus where he ascends and gets a ton of stats i think it's like equivalent in my opinion so what are we looking for here we, we could grab that nasus on carousel that'd be really nice we really don't have any items to really finish off at this point but we do have the vi pair so we might as well just go grab the vi that way we don't have to waste like money rolling or something like that we want to get some upgrades out onto the board right And we know Vi isn't going to be on our final board, so I'm fine slamming the component on her right now. So 3-5, a lot of people push 7 if they're ahead. You go level 7 on 3-5 or 4-1 usually, right, following standard leveling. Just something to note if you haven't thought about it. Dude, this... This casted him, bro. He's on, he's on salary, that's all I know. At this point, we're, letting, we're stacking our bread, we're letting our gold interest go up. And at this point, I'm pretty sure in my head I wanted to go 9. But the game's got to start giving me some things here. The The other issue with the Sharima comp and why people don't play it compared to other comps is it's a really expensive comp, dude. It is a super expensive comp. Like, what is it? You need J4, that's 12. You need Nasus, that's 12. You need Azir, that's 12. You need Cassante, that's 15. So it starts, it starts becoming overbearing, you know? Especially if you want to tech in like a Heimer or something like that. Just to say, in case you guys don't know, they recently did, not recently, but you know, like a few patches ago, if you slammed Infinity Edge here on Action, I wouldn't blame you, because Azir needs crit, and I probably should have done that here, but I figured that I could use this crit glove for something else. If I found like on, like a, another Thieves a crit glove, I can make another Thieves gloves or something. I can make a, a Thieves gloves or something like that, right? So that's why we're leaving that, that little crit glove off to the side. It's just a really good, um component to just have on bench right so at this point what i should have done was i don't know i was hoping that i would have gotten the azir off of that and now we're on seven so we have to roll a little bit here we want to hold on to the Cassante because we don't know if we're going to be going full shrima or not and at this point i don't know what's stronger if i should have just i don't know I gotta, I gotta make a decision here on whether or not I want to put in the Lux and go like that route or if I want to go full Shurima. 
because you got to go with what the game gives you guys, right? Like, I can't just go something because I think it's fun. Like, if the game's not giving me swains, if it's not giving me the Garens and Sonas and Luxes, I just can't force that route. And at this point, we're level 7, bro. We have so many pairs. And I'm probably going to decide to go 8 here. We're probably going to go 8 and roll a good chunk of gold to finish out this board. That way we can get another unit onto the board. We know we want to drop the Vi at some point here. We want to find Nasus. That's, that's like the big cornerstone of this comp. Plus on four or five people usually go level eight. And because I've been making gold interest this whole game, even though I've been win streaking, you can tell I'm kind of broke about where I should be. And we know we have a Negatron cloak. And this is like some tech I like going is just slamming a, a Zephyr on the front line to get like the big meaty tank out of the way where they just stack all their tank items on them. I gotta make the decision if I'm putting out the Nasus here. I think this is stronger technically. And dude, this guy's board was so strong. He hit me for 15, man. That's brutal. And then you gotta... I don't know if I push A here, but you guys shouldn't push A here if I do. You should wait until 5-1 to go 8. Get, make, get more out of the natural leveling. Get the gold interest for this round, the neutrals, and then the following. You see how Zephyr's front line, then Azir goes right to attacking the back. And Zephyring front line isn't just good for this comp. Like, if you guys play the Noxus, Darius, with like Katarina or whatnot, you can always have a where you just have a Zephyr on the front line and allow Darius and Katarina to wrap to the back line, especially when people don't position, man. I mean, I've been into Challenger before, and people still don't position. People are eating Hot Pockets or Pop-Tarts or some shit off onto the side, and they're not really paying attention to the game, so you just get free wins. doing a little bit of a roll down we really want to we really want to get this uh zier upgrade in and at this point i don't know what's stronger if seven trima where you instantly ascend is stronger or having the multicaster the strategist i think seven trima just is But you can tell I got a roll here. I'm starting to take like really big losses. We gotta start making big boy decisions too here. So, then the Aatrox too is nice. We probably should have put the uh, Zephyr on the Aatrox. Because even though it is a tank item, it's kind of like a damaging item. It gives them attack speed and some magic resist. It's not too bad in HP. But the big thing is if you don't got Lux Man or something to do damage along with the Azir, you're going to kind of struggle here, right? And future note, do not complete the action here, especially if you plan on using him on the Hex. We're missing out on just six gold interest at this point. We probably should have put the Renekton onto the Hex and then put the action out onto the board in hindsight, right? We're not perfect. Now, if you want my opinion, what I should have did is make gold interest better throughout the game, keep the e econ high, have the Teemo, there's a tier one Teemo on that hex the whole game. We could have been level nine with strategist three, multicaster and a whole nother legendary out on my board right now right but we didn't do that that would have been like how you got first place this game you made gold interest throughout the game 
You push nine, you kept Teemo on that hex. I don't think seven Shurima is all that bad. Do I think this is like always the winning comp? No, I think you have to have the opener for it. But what I will say is it's very uncontested, man. Nobody's like playing this. I think people are playing a lot of AD flex between Ziri and Aphelios. I think people are playing still like Duelist Ionia stuff. I think people fell off the whole Azir bandwagon. And I was really upset here. I was hoping Cassante would kick something off the map, but the guy's edge of night, the Yasuo's edge of night procced right there and saved him. And we are doing a little bit of donkey rolling. I'm zooming in here getting frustrated because a Zier 2 compared to Zier 1 is such a big difference. At this point, I kind of have to give up on the idea of going 9 because Aatrox is a 15 gold unit. As you can see, the comp just starts getting more. Like, it's such an expensive comp to be able to make work. The game, you have to naturalize a lot to make it go. And I got to decide what's the next best last item. I decided to put Edge of Night on Cassante. That way, Cassante can get off his like damage ability and his like proc or kick somebody at least off the map, right? So if the whole team's focusing him, I want it to reset. So at least like in this fight here, he kicked two people off the map, I think. Or at least he's CCing them, right? We don't want him to get bursted down. He's like a really big component of the comp. And now we're just left with this Shen, right? And this comp. This guy, instead of going nine, he stayed a lower tiers and re-rolled. Like I should probably have like a three cost. Some I should probably should have a three star something. But as you can see, this homie's giga strong, right? He has the Heimerdinger turret and all that. Especially with the anti-heal to deal with my comp that has a lot of healing. And there's either a few ways you could have did this. Going 9 would be a big problem solver, especially if we had like a Heimerdinger pumping deeps. Or having like what I saw in the hex, like the Teemo and then like another legendary, right? But what you're going to see me do here is I'm going to try to Zephyr the Shen and position it to where my team can kind of wrap. So you see how I Zephyr the Shen and then my Azir goes to the back line and starts punching the back line there. I'm hoping that we can get on top of the carry and kill him there and just get the Shen out of the way for the time being. Because for whatever reason, I don't position the Cassante well enough to be able to allow him to kick everything off the map. I don't know if I need to work on that, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you have a good day. Best of luck.